Hello everyone and welcome to the Shrimpy channel. In this video, we're going to talk about cryptocurrency index funds and how to automate them through the Shrimpy application. As you can see, I've loaded up my Shrimpy dashboard. On my dashboard, you can see I have a main portfolio as well as a index fund. This index fund is the set of assets that we are going to index uh, today in this example tutorial. In order to begin automating an index fund, what we will want to do is head on over to the Automation tab. Once we are on the Automation tab, we can create a new automation at any time by clicking this plus button right here. And we can see that we have this empty slate where we are going to create our portfolio for the first time. In Shrimpy, there are two options. You can either add assets or you can create index. Selecting the add assets option, this allows you to select the individual assets that you would like to have in your portfolio. So for example, you could select these assets here, select add, and then you could decide how much you want to allocate to each asset with these sliders right here. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then you just click save and start your automation to begin automating that portfolio. But in this example, we do not want to do that. So let's go ahead and clear these right here. Instead, for this example, we want to create an index. So let's select that. As you can see, starting off on this index pop-up, we have three different options for how we can allocate the index. These three weighting options include a market cap weight, a square root market cap weight, and equal weightings among the assets. Essentially how each of these works is a market cap index will index the market cap of the assets that are available in the range. So for example, at this time, Bitcoin has almost a 72% weight in the market when it comes to the value that it holds when compared to other assets. Using the market cap weighted strategy could mean that uh, assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum have very heavy weightings, while other assets that are further down the line, for example, EOS, would have much smaller weightings when it comes to comparing these assets for the index. The second option here is the square root market cap option. This option is similar to the market cap, but essentially instead of just taking the raw market cap, we will take the square root of the market cap. And what that does is it dampens the impact that large assets have on the portfolio. So assets like Bitcoin will have slightly smaller weightings uh, than they should or than their actual representation inside the market. And then finally, even weightings. This is the most simple of the strategies for indexing. This will give an exactly even distribution to your portfolio. So each asset has the exact same amount of value purchased when you do rebalances or when you allocate your portfolio. In this example, let's go ahead and do a market cap index. As you can see right now, these two assets have equal weightings. That is because we have a, a max percentage set down here. We'll get to that in a moment. The next selection that we have for features for this index strategy is the number of assets. With this selection, you could select any range of assets. In this initial example, you could see we've selected assets ranging from 1 to 10 based on market cap. So Shrimpy would take the 10 top assets by market cap and put them into this portfolio. But we could change that. So if we wanted 5 to 15, Shrimpy would take the 5th to the 15th asset and put those in the portfolio instead of taking the top 1 through 10. For this example, let's stick with 1 through 10. This is one of the most basic indexes that we could create in the cryptocurrency market, essentially indexing the top 10 assets by market cap. For the next setting for our index, we have the minimum and the maximum percent for any of the assets in the por portfolio. What this means is, what is the maximum allocation or minimum allocation that we would like to allocate to any asset in the portfolio? Right now, we have this set to a 5% for the minimum percentage and 25% for the maximum. 
if we were to adjust this, say we set the maximum percent to 100%, we can see that the allocation for Bitcoin begins to expand. And if we reduce this minimum to 1%, we now have almost 70% Bitcoin that would be allocated for this portfolio. Since this is a very heavy weighting towards Bitcoin for our portfolio, many people might not be interested in having such a, a large allocation to Bitcoin. We can reduce the allocation through two different methods. We can either increase the minimum percentage, so each asset in the portfolio at, at least has 5% allocated to that asset, but we could also reduce the maximum percentage. So now that we've increased the minimum to 5%, you can see that Bitcoin still has a healthy allocation. Let's go ahead and reduce that by changing this to 30%. With that, you can see we cap Bitcoin out at 30% because no asset can be allocated more than 30%. And then the remainder of the percentage that was taken from Bitcoin is allocated to the rest of the assets based on their market cap. Most of the assets here reach the minimum of 5%, but then there are some assets that are impacted by the reduction of the, the maximum from Bitcoin. Great, so the next setting for creating your index is the buffer percentage. The buffer percentage is a way for the index to know when it should swap in or out assets into the portfolio. The reason this is important is because if there was no buffer, when an asset increases or decreases in market cap, it can cause the index to swap assets in and out of the index at a rapid pace. Say, for example, one second EOS is the 10th asset, but then the next second EOS is the 11th asset and there's a new 10th asset, that would cause trades where EOS would be sold and the other asset would be bought. If this swapping back and forth happens frequently, it can cause thrashing in your portfolio where you're essentially losing money because you're spending so much on trading fees back and forth from EOS and this other asset. So what a buffer percent does is it tells Shrimpy what percent the incoming asset has to be above the market cap of the last asset before it swaps it in or out. So say the market cap of EOS is $100 million. In order for a new asset to overtake EOS and be included in the portfolio, the new asset would have to have a market cap of 105 million since our buffer percent is 5%. This reduces the frequency of swaps in and out of the portfolio and it stabilizes the portfolio over the long term because you don't have these, these frequent swaps. Now that we've discussed buffer percent, let's look at the include and exclude list that we can create to either specifically include assets into the portfolio or exclude assets that we don't want to include. In many indexes in the cryptocurrency market, it's very common to exclude USDT. So let's go ahead and start by excluding USDT. Besides USDT, there are a number of other stablecoins. You can see USDC was populated here after we excluded USDT. So let's go ahead and exclude USDC as well. And there may be other stable coins that you want to exclude. Let's say PAX is another one. Let's see what other USD. Yeah, there's TUSD. There's also USDS. And there may be others. So you can exclude all of those right here. And Shrimpy won't purchase those assets for the index. It will leave those excluded from the index. Finally, we have include. Say there was an asset that wasn't included in the portfolio. So as you can see right here, there's only 10 assets included in the portfolio. Maybe you have an 11th asset that you really want included in the portfolio. Say that's Doge. You just really want to have Doge. You can add that to the include list and Doge will get added to the portfolio along with all of the other assets that would normally be allocated in the 1 through 10 index. What this means is we no longer have 10 assets. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 assets that will be allocated in this index. It should be noted that excluding an asset does not reduce the number of assets that will be included in the index, but including 
an asset will increase the number of assets that are included in the portfolio. You could see this by when we excluded USDT, we still allocated 10 assets. But when we included Doge, this included an 11th asset. If Doge was already in this range of the top 10, then it would not include any more assets. It would just stick with the 10. But since Doge was not in the top 10, this new asset is included in the portfolio as well because you are specifically allocating that asset using the include functionality. Great, so we have allocated the portfolio that we want. We have the allocations we want and we have the automation that we want for this index. Let's go ahead and apply this index to our automation. We can see here the allocations look a little funky. We got Bitcoin at 30%, Ethereum at nearly 25%, and then the remainder of the assets are either at 5% or close to 5%. But for this example, let's just say this is exactly what we want. Now that we have selected the assets that will be in our index, we can also select the rebalancing period. For example, say we want to have a one week rebalance period. We can go ahead and do that by selecting weeks and then inputting one. This will rebalance the portfolio at the same time each week where it will swap assets in and out of the index if there are any assets that changed from this index. It will also rebalance your allocations to make sure they align with the target allocations that are designated by the index. Once we have set our rebalancing strategy, we can save this automation. We can name this automation index fund. And now that we have saved the automation, we can start the automation. Starting the automation will apply this automation to a portfolio. In this case, we're gonna to apply to the index fund portfolio. And then we can select to rebalance now. What this would do is as soon as we click the start button, it will immediately start rebalancing the portfolio to match these target allocations that are designated inside this automation. Then every following week at the same time, it will once again rebalance the portfolio to reach those target allocations. Great, so now this automation has been applied to our portfolio. We've allocated our index that we want, and we will continue to rebalance this index over time. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn about indexes in the Shrimpy application. We hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our team. We're always happy to help. Otherwise, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.